All right, guys, it is a super duper ultimate day in the bluegrass. 90 degrees, the sun's out, we're headed to the lake a little bit later, but before I went to the lake, I wanted to make a quick video for you. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you today about is, uh, you know, kind of about helping yourself set goals that are appropriate for your situation. All right, now, when I was a younger person, you would go to the dog trainer. Let me walk up through here. Cameraman, go over this way. I gotta see what these dogs are doing. When I was a younger person, you would go to the dog trainer because the dog trainer or the dog training business, the facility, that was where you had to go get all your information. You know, the, they, those guys had the information. Like, so when I was young, I had the information and I would give it to my clients and, and you know, try to help them as best as I could, right? Now, over the years, as the internet's kind of blown up and YouTube's blown up, well, my job has changed, to be honest with you. My job is no longer just to simply provide information to people when they come to see me. My job is to help those people build a personal narrative, you know, to help them, you know, kind of create a system of strategies and techniques that work for their situation. There's just an endless supply of facts and factoids and opinion online, and there's no filter. There's not a filter on YouTube where you can go, oh, uh, I want to filter by how much expertise a person has or how much expertise relative to my position that a person has. Now, I have my own filter, right? <laughs> kind of here's where my filter starts. Uh, you know, there's some great dog trainers in the world. But uh, so for me to even be considered to be a great dog trainer, you have to have trained more dogs than my 11 year old son, right? So like if you go in through YouTube and you see somebody and they're just outside in their street or their house and they're telling you about everything they know about dogs, right? And all the trainers they train. I don't know, look at my channel and see if that person seems to have trained more dogs than my 11 year old son. If they have, well, okay, start listening to them. Now, uh, let's talk about like once you have filtered out and you find some experts, listen guys, there are some amazing experts out there. Ah, but maybe they're experts in something, right? That's not, not perfect for your life. Okay, you have guys that are great at protection work, they're great at scent work, they're great at agility, they're great at competitive obedience, right? And I mean, man, those people are awesome and way better than me at a whole lot of things, just to be honest with you, you know? And so if that's what you're, you know, if that's the path that you've chosen, for you and your dog, that's kind of, you know, you want to gravitate over towards those guys because <clears throat> they're experts. But if you look, you'll kind of see that the dog training world really gets divided into dog-centric dog training strategies and techniques and non-dog-centric dog training strategies and techniques. So what I would consider dog-centric is like a person that wants to do a sport or a competitive hobby with a the dog. They're exploring the universe of possibilities. What is possible with this dog? Okay, now over here is kind of non dog centric dog trainers. And I love dogs, guys. Listen, I've worked with my dogs forever. And uh, I mean, I live here. You know, I, I don't go to the kennel to work. I live at my kennel. I get up, walk outside, and train dogs. And then I train dogs and go to bed, right? So I live it. So I love dogs as much as anybody in the world. But I don't consider myself a dog centric dog trainer. I don't even think all the stuff that I do is particularly important from the point of view of me doing it. Okay, I'm a person that enjoys doing cool stuff. So instead of me thinking in terms of I'm going to go do cool stuff with my dog, what I think is, uh, you know, and see what's possible with my dog, I think, hey dog, I'm going to go do cool stuff and if you'll come and be still and have good manners, you can go do cool stuff with me. <laughs> I know that sounds that sounds ego driven, but it is. I'm not going to lie. Like I don't get up tomorrow. I'm not going to get up this weekend and go think, oh, I'm going to take my dog to do a dog activity. No, I'm going to get up this weekend and I'm going to go hiking or I'm going to go to the lake or I'm going to go to the shooting club, you know, or I'm going to go to a barbecue or a party. And as I go to that party, I'm going to look at the dog and I'm going to say, hey, listen, you know, as long as you'll come and be still and have good manners, you can come to the party with me. You can go hiking with me. You can go to the lake with me. You can go to the kids' lacrosse game with me. You can drive up to, to, to New York to drop my kid off at West Point with me. I'm taking a dog up there. Like, my dogs can go anywhere I go, right, because they'll come and be still and have good manners. So that's how I structure my training. So, let, well, here, let's just go over to my small challenges course, and uh, let me explain to you more of what I'm talking about. Cameraman, move up this way a little bit so you can see these dogs. Now, you'll notice these dogs kind of lay around the periphery because it's kind of starting to get hot and they're under the shade. But once we start headed towards the small challenges course, then uh, they'll start coming with me because they're anticipating we're going to do some fun work. Now, I've made all these videos over the years where I talk about, you know, here, do this to get your puppy to do that. And I feel like I've done a little bit of a disservice to you guys by not making you understand how, how, 
I don't want to say unimportant, but why? Well, really, how unimportant that specific stuff is, right? And I don't mean that you don't have to have it, because you do have to have it. You have to have a dog that has good basic vocabulary. You have to have a dog that can walk on a leash. You have to have a dog that'll come to you under high levels of distraction. You have to have a dog that can negotiate uh, physical impediments in its environment. You have to have a dog that can wait and stay if you want to get out and lead real life. But I look at that schooling, that yard work, as what allows me to get out and live my life. And the life, that's what does the teaching, guys. So when people come here for dog training, look around here. See these dogs? What they're getting is a base level of education in how to interact with other dogs. They're getting a base level education in how to be attentive and calm and polite. They're getting a base level education of how to uh, 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 interact with, the, with various you know, environmental factors. And that's really important, guys. You know, when we're doing our training, look at this, just this grass. Now see this grass, it's dewy. Two hours ago, it was, it was real chill, you know? Now it's starting to dry out. So even your yard, like at seven o'clock in the morning is different than 12 and it's different at eight. So, Yes, when we're out here at my kennel, yes, we're working on cued behavior, but not all that much. We work on our cued behavior so that we have a basic you know, set of tools to communicate with our dogs and motivate our dogs so that we can go out in the real world and expose the dog to tons and tons of environmental stimulation. Okay, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to talk about how I use my course and the development of my basic vocabulary to set the stage for me taking the dogs out in the real world and them learning by doing, or what I call adventure training. And you might say, well, Stoney, why do you call it adventure training? I call it adventure training because I'm looking at it from a puppy's perspective, okay? So when I say adventure training, you might think, well, Stoney, I, you know, I, I, I work all week, I've got kids, it's hard for me to, to go on an adventure. Okay, that's because you're looking at it from your perspective. Just because you've lived in your neighborhood or your town your whole life, Okay, and it's not a big deal to you, doesn't mean it's not a big deal to the puppy. Like I have a field out back and I've got paths mowed in it. And so when I take the puppies out there, we'll be walking on the path and then we go exploring. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a video camera out there today and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. When we're exploring, that's when everything is happening. Everything is really happening, right? We're getting out, we're having puppy sized adventures and we, you can have those right down at the end of your street. Right? You don't have to go to Colorado to have an adventure. When you take a puppy out into a field with brush and little swags and ravines and stuff, right? when you take a puppy out there, they might as well be going to deepest, darkest Africa from their perspective. Just like when you take a kid to an amusement park. You know they're not going to fall off the roller, the, the roller coaster, but they don't know, right? And so what you're doing is you're, you're taking a kid on an adventure and, you know, wow, it makes the kid want to get out and live life. Same thing happens with puppies. So. Our real training for the day is going to be going out and doing learning by doing, you know, or doing puppy adventure training. But we have to have some skills to be able to go out and learn like that. So uh, I'm going to show you what we need, what skills we need. Pippa, come on. I'm going to get Pippa, and uh, I'm going to have George come over here and get uh, uh, Finley. <laughs> come here, Pippa. Come here, Finley. All right, so here's Pippa. Now, Pippa is an 18-week-old lab, give or take a couple of days. And Finley is about 14 and a half weeks, uh, give or take a few days. I kind of forget. All right, here, Georgie, you get your little dog. Finley. All right, now, what I'm working on with, uh, with uh, Pippa is the same stuff as always, but she's at the age, you know, where I'm able to start fading off my food work. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to do my small challenges course. I'm going to work on my vo vocabulary, but you're going to see that I don't use any treats. And George got a little bit younger dog there, so he's going to probably use uh, quite a few treats. So what do I mean when I start talking about a basic vocabulary and the establishment of a basic vocabulary? I want the dog to understand that sometimes there's going to be a physical impediment in this environment. I need to be able to tell the dog that I'd like for it to negotiate this impediment. And I need the dog to be confident enough that it can do so, right? Now one of the things what I'm doing here is I'm building physical and mental resiliency. And that's very important in dogs. You see how this young puppy at 18 weeks old, how, how it just came up and it's able to negotiate these obstacles? Well, look guys, that, that's not by accident, okay? We get our puppies out and we get them moving. We encourage the puppies to engage in full range of motion activity. And, and here's why. I want the dog's body to work correctly. This dog has to learn, it has a very short period of time in its life where it can learn 
to use its body. The connection between its brain and the rest of its body needs to be developed. Its musculoskeletal system needs to be developed and that comes from experience, from putting slight stress on them so that the stress uh, creates a, a, a situation where the dogs have to have an adaptation. Right? So when we're walking and moving over here, guys, like this small challenges course, it's encouraging the dog to learn on multiple levels. Not only is the dog having to learn to work with me, which is very important, right? If I'm going to take it out and have an adventure with it, I need to know that the dog's going to pay attention to me. But I need to know that the dog has the mental and physical capacity to have an adventure, you know? And this, this trend towards not exercising puppies uh, till their growth plates ch close. Well, that's crazy. Can you imagine a bunch of 20-year-old kids trying to learn to ride a skateboard or a bicycle for the first time? I mean, it's absurd. It's, it's completely absurd. It's never going to work. So we get them out and we move them, right? So let's go through this course one more time and let's, uh, let's say what we need to say, Georgie. So we're going, so I say, hey, let's go. Come on, dear little Pippa. Come on, come on. Up. Very nice. Up. And this is how I talk to them, guys, because I'm trying to really, really, really stress to the dog, okay, come on, come on, that working with me is going to lead to good stuff. Oh, that's a good Pippa. Oh, she's so smart. And if they get a little bit hot, oh, you can come in there and tease them a little bit. Good. Wait. Very nice. There you go. George, you might need to up your reinforcement schedule a little bit. It's getting hot. So sometimes you got to give them a little extra incentive. Oh. Now this guy here, he just got here yesterday. His name's Breck, and he's a cool dude. But Breck's nine months old, and so it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to get Breck to be able to negotiate all these obstacles. Oh, watch out. Because, you know, he doesn't know how to use his body right now. But we're gonna take care of that. Good, so this is what I think a dog needs to know. Easy, very nice. Wait, nice temporary pause. Wait right there for a second. Easy. Oh, very good dog. And that's an 18-week-old puppy, so she's not perfect, but she ain't bad. Good dog. So this is what we knock out. I mean, this is just our, this is our warm-up for the day, guys. You know, like a lot of times when you're watching YouTube videos, you start thinking, like, that's the training. You know, well, that's not the training for us. You know, what the training for us is, is living our lives. Yeah, this is what allows us to put puppies in the position of being able to learn. Oh, here you go, Georgie. You can't, ah, I can't wait so long. There you go, watch out. Good, give me some of your treats. All right, so they see right there, Georgie is a little bit hesitant in how he got up there. And uh, so if you're hesitant in what you're asking your dog to do, dog will be hesitant. And so this is what, this is what your exercise with small challenges teaches you, is how to effectively, like see when I stepped in here, see how these dogs got more still? This is, you're refining your ability to influence the dog and you're refining the dog's ability to be influenced through your yard work, through your practice work, right? Now, the <clears throat> real honing of these skills are gonna happen when you go out and have an adventure. And remember what I said, it doesn't have to be an adventure to you. It just has to be an adventure to the puppy. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you what we do after lunch. And we usually just don't take video cameras out back just because we're busy, right? But I'm gonna show you, this is what we do to get them started, okay? This primes the pump. But what we're fixing to go out back and do is where the real life happens. Just like what you saw when I was doing the kayaks uh, last week, right? That's where the real learning happens. So when a dog comes here for training, I establish a base a baseline of behavior. They have good attention span, good impulse control. They have good physical ability. They understand their body. They have good proprioception, right? They have a good vocabulary. But the real training is when people take them home and live stimulus-rich lives with them, okay? So when you're, when you're watching your YouTube channels, don't, don't, don't judge yourself because somebody is maybe better at standing here with their food and going, oh, good sit. Good sit, good heel, good down, good go over this direction, or good, listen guys, in the scheme of things, that's not that important. All the best dogs I've ever seen in my life were just dogs you could tell to get in the truck, and they would get in the truck and go down to the gorge and go hiking with you. That's the best dogs, okay? So don't get home and when you're doing this stuff, if it doesn't look exactly like me or exactly like some other guy that does, you know, training with the dog, don't worry about it. That's not even where the real training is happening. The real training is happening when you go to the ballpark, when you go hiking, when you go to the barbecue. This right here just helps you help that puppy navigate those situations. But always be thinking in terms of learning by doing and adventure training. And remember that the adventure only has to be an adventure from the puppy's perspective. 
All right, now we're going to go out back and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, and we're on our way out into the great wilderness of the bluegrass state. And, uh, you know, at least from the puppy's perspective, it's a great wilderness, you know. So we get our yard work done, okay? And so I kind of know that my dog's going to do pretty well. All right, move over this way a little bit, cameraman, so they can see the path that we normally take. So what I do is I'll kind of come up here, and you'll see where this is all mowed. And the dogs are pretty used to this. You know, it's just grass, you know. And listen, guys, I'm telling you, it's things you don't think about. But watch this. You can see it on the camera. But look, I'm out here. It's 92 degrees, right? And as soon as I move over this way, it gets super cool. Now, you'll notice, uh, right, you should turn around there and get Finley right there, Eli. Look at Finley. Finley is learning, you know, how to find shady spots and what the point of being in a shady spot really is, okay? You, and you don't think about it. You just take it for granted, but you're, you're a human being, an adult human being, most of the people watching this video, right? And uh, so there are things that a puppy actually needs how to learn. They need to learn about shade. They need to learn about thermal regulation, you know, because the puppies come out. If you take them to a super stimulus rich environment, like out in the woods or something, uh, or out at the beach, it's very easy for them to, uh, you know, kind of overdo it. And then they get a little too hot. And then when they get a little too hot, then maybe your day's not like what you would like for it to be. Okay, so you're taking them out. And now this is just, show them Eli, this is just my back training field, okay? But to the puppies, listen guys, like I told you, you know, we might as well be in deepest, darkest Africa, you know? So as I head up through this, through this line here, what's gonna happen is these puppies are gonna follow me and I've got Henry with me, my mentor dog. And every so often, since we're on an adventure, what do you do on adventures? You take a Frisbee with you, you know? <laughs> And I'll throw that frisbee out in the, out in the out in the wilderness, and the puppies will look. And at first, they might not want to go out there because, like, guys, like I told you, this just likes looks like low level brush to you. But to the puppies, you gotta remember the puppies are down here, right? And so look how tall all this stuff is to the puppy. It's a big deal, you know. So for the puppy to come out here, like it's hard. You know, their vision, they can't see what's going on. There might be a bear back there or a wolf. Who knows? But by having my ace mentor dog with me, right, and he's going out there in the brush all the time, the puppies are like, okay, well, that must be cool. And when they go out there, guys, they are bar they're bombarded with different types of stimulation. Most of it good, but some of it bad. Like, uh, let me get over here and show you. Like, we find the tree trimmers that are on our road and we always grab trees and stuff from them okay and what we'll do is we'll take those tree trees tree limbs and we'll place them strategically along our path you know partly so that we can uh, build uh, it, like a uh, real life uh, obstacles you know what i'm saying uh, partly because we want the dog to understand that when they're out and about they have to be careful so they'll be out here and they'll start getting to where they're jumping around in the grass and things like that and uh, they'll realize you know they'll realize oh wait a minute i have to be careful and that's you know if you have a young puppy about this big when they're moving you know they don't have you know they're, they're not moving too awfully fast and so if they run into a stall or if they run into a briar bush or something well it's no big deal they're not going so fast they might hurt themselves Watch when you go out with your friends and they take a year old dog or a two year old dog that uh, has been in the suburbs its entire life. Watch the way it tries to negotiate a hiking trail. Watch the way it just randomly with reckless abandon runs into the brush. You know, okay. Well, so what happens, it runs into the brush. It might not know that there's a, you know, maybe there's a hole over here or maybe there's some uh, Maybe there's a, uh, some stob sticking up or, you know, they might not even know something simple. Like, look at this, guys. This is a briar bush. You know what I'm saying? And this is sticky. And, you know, like to you, you look out for it. But this has a distinct smell to it. So after I've brought these puppies out here in this wilderness a few times, like you can watch them. They'll be moving around and you'll see them kind of put their nose up and they'll take a nice wide path around the briar bush. I mean, it's really funny to watch how quickly they develop, a, uh, you know, a repertoire of behavior that's situationally appropriate. Okay, so we're just going to keep walking. Oh, and those puppies, I don't know if you can see them in the frame, but they're just kind of over there chilling, and they're enjoying the shade, you know. 
And one of the things you got to do is you got to let them, you know, you got to let them get in the shade and play. And they'll have a tendency to want to stay in the shade as much as possible. Like they just went off down that path down there. Puppies! Little puppies! <laughs> and so they're going to want to be in the shade, okay? But come on, Finley. Come on, Finley, Finley, Finley. <laughs> but I want to teach them about being hot, you know? I want to teach them that sometimes we're going to be out and uh, we're going to do things and like, listen, while we're doing them, it's going to be hot. So I'm going to get out here with my mentor dog and I'm going to throw the Frisbee some. And I'm going to call the puppies out here with me. Oh, now look, we're in big adventure land. Like I said, this is a wilderness. It might as well be Africa, you know, good, or Alaska. And I'm just throwing this Frisbee out and we're hanging out, having a good time. Good. But I don't want you to lose perspective, guys, from the dog's point of view. Look, they're down here. You see what I'm saying? They're down here. So look what they're doing. And look, I mean, I don't know how good you can see it in a video, but there's so many different kinds of things here. I mean, look, it's this kind of plant, and there's this kind of plant, and this kind of plant. Look. Ah, oh, look, that's got a very distinct smell to it. Very distinct smell. Very distinct smell. And you got to remember, dogs primarily cat you know, uh, categorize... Uh, their experience through olfaction, right? So when we're out here, like what it smells like right here is different than what it smells like right here. We got a lot of, if you look underneath here, some dead grass, it's been raining, okay? So like there's some mud underneath all that. And so the dog's walking around and all I need them to understand is that Uncle Stoney and Henry, the mentor dog, are out here having a good time. Right? And so look at them. See how they're looking at Henry and they're seeing what's going on? They're looking at me and they're seeing what's going on. And as we're moving around out here, look what we run up on. Let me switch around here. Look. Show them what this is. It's an old dried up blackberry bush. But it's still got, look at the stickers. You see what I'm saying? That smells a certain way. So these dogs, they'll come out here and they'll put their nose on. It'll hurt their nose. And then, you know, the next thing you know, they go, whoa, I'm keeping my face away from that. You know, so now let's go out and find some more adventuring. Oh, walking, having a good time. So we've been out here in the sunshine, right? And so I want to, one, what I want the dogs to understand, here's a better example. Come over here, Eli. Here's a better example about a blackberry bush. Look at that. Oh, ow, that dog walks right into it. And so, you know, as it walks right into this blackberry bush, it gets, uh, well, it gets little pricks, right? And so the dog will start to see that. And they'll say, oh, I'm stay away from that. It'll start to smell that, and it'll stay away from it. And we need to do this. And you can do this right in your neighborhood. You don't have to go anyplace fancy. It can be right in your local park. And that's going to prepare you. You know, you've saved up all year, and you're going to Yosemite, right? And you want to take your dog. You're going to go camping. You're going to go hiking and whatever. You don't want to take your dog into a wilderness area or a high distraction environment of any kind of city, an urban environment, without your dog understanding that it has to be cognizant of perils in the environment, you know? Now look at this dog over here. See, it's kind of looking for some shade, but it's not really in the shade, right? See, it's got to learn about it. It's got to learn about what's a real shady spot. So let's go on down here and go in the shade. Come on, puppies. Come on, puppies. So we go down here and take a nice walk in the shade and when we're back here doing our uh, initial conditioning and uh, adventure training I try to split my time up where part of it's out in the sun or the cold you know I do this in the cold too it's the same principle so part of it will spend out there in the, in the sun and getting hot and then we'll come over here in the shade now we're going to walk through this shady area and we're going to come back out in a hot area and I'm trying to make the dogs understand that like if we go somewhere like there's going to be two types of fun to be had, and uh, I might have said this in other videos, but we have the kind of fun that you have that's fun right now, like eating a chocolate bar, but it's not so much fun later because you get a little chubby, right? Or there's the kind of fun that comes from climbing a mountain where it's really not very much fun, but it's fun after you have accomplished it, right? And so we're always trying to make the dogs understand that, yes, laying in the shade, it's fun, right? But laying in the shade is more fun because just a minute ago, the dogs were in the hot sunshine out there making their way through uh, our local puppy wilderness. All right, so let's walk on down through here. Come on, puppies. Little puppies. They'll find Henry. Henry, come on. And so we're just walking around. Good. And this right here, guys, this is awesome. You know, go find you a shady spot. 
<laughs> and uh, play with your dogs and do adventuring, you know, and it's kind of fun. Come on over here in here, cameraman, because look, think about what you guys are thinking. Here's this mode path, and then you see how, like, like there's obvious, you know, difference in, uh, you know, fauna and stuff right here. But we'll go right through this, and we'll get under the canopy of this forest, if the cameraman can get in here. Oh, and look how cool this is, you know. Guys, this is just my backyard, but look. Look how awesome this is. What an awesome exploratory place this is. Puppies! Let me get the puppies back here so I can show them that it's awesome. Oh, little babies. Oh my gosh, and they're so black, you probably won't even be able to see them. But this is cool. And man, this ground, boy, you're talking about like, uh, like cool and, 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 and nice to lay on. Dirt, good. There's all kinds of little bit of salamanders and stuff back here, and dogs get to smell everything. But just not 15 feet over there, it's completely different type of like vegetation and, and vegetation density, you know? So like there's adventures to be had, that's what I'm telling you. You just have to be creative in finding your adventures. But they're there, look, they're, they're even there for your children, even if you don't have a dog. Some people watch this channel just so they like dogs. Guys, when you go to the park, look, look for these little magic kingdoms right there, right there, right, you just don't see them, they're just right off of the path. Magic kingdoms everywhere you look. Okay, so let's back on out of here. Well, we'll just go around. Okay, we'll let the cameraman back out before we get attacked by a lion, a cobra, something like that. So we're coming out of here. All right, now bring my... Now, if I hadn't done my yard work with these puppies, then this would be harder because I couldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't know that they're going to stay with me. I wouldn't know that they're going to hang out with me. You know, but by, ha by establishing good yard work, I know I can hold these puppies' attention span pretty well. So we're walking, having a good time, and here comes the sunshine. Now, that bright spot down there is not just light, <laughs> it's heat, guys, and it's 70 something degrees here, and it's 92 degrees over there. So sometimes, as you go to doing your adventure training, your puppy will stop at the shade line and be like, hey, dude, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and have my adventure here. <laughs> so, you, you know, probably need to just put a long line on them so that you can make your adventure happen, you know. Because remember, I told you about the fun, right? When you're young, you just want that kind of fun that's fun right now. As you get older, that's when you learn to appreciate the fun later stuff. Come on, puppies. Little babies. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, good dogs. And be aware. Now look, just over here, vegetation. Certain kinds of trees. Over here, different vegetation, different kinds of trees, you know? Because this is this is shade vegetation, and that's not shady vegetation. All kinds of things, all kinds of things in life where like just different, different, a, a difference of just a couple of feet, like right here, more blackberry bushes for the dog to look at. What this is, guys, that's poison ivy, so you got to learn to stay away from that. And you need to learn to identify poison ivy so that, oh, this is super important, guys. When you go out on venturing, if you see, you got to be on the lookout, like a, like really looking for poison ivy because your dog will go over there and get in the poison ivy. Dude, then they'll get in your car. Then they'll get poison ivy all over you and all over the car. And then as soon as you get the, the poison ivy cleared up, then you get it. It's awful. It's awful. So you got to be real careful. Now look. So here I'm on the trail. I got a chance to make, uh, make, make use of something on the trail. Make a small challenge. So look, I'm going to help this dog learn just to kind of navigate. You know, like see this dog looks at this at this branch here and says, well, Stoney, look at that dog. He says, why would I want to climb over that? And I say, look, I'm just going to need you to sometimes. So come on, Finley, you can do it. Challenging them. Not challenging them so much that they're going to fail. Then I put my obstacle right back off the trail because I'm a good steward of my trails. We take off walking. Dun, dun, dun. Every so often I'll come to a corner and I'll run around the corner like I'm going to get away from them. Ah! And I'll try to hide from them, you know. And if they catch me, oh, I make over them. Oh, you guys are so smart. So that they understand when we're out on the trail, when we're out in the wilderness, they got to keep up with Uncle Stoney. So we're walking. Ugh. Find me another little obstacle there. And so I say, get reach in here, give me some dog crack. Ooh, can you walk over that? Very nice. What about you, Finley? Can you walk over that? Oh, very nice. Put my obstacle back up. Dun, dun, dun. We don't want to mow, run over those with the mower. 
Good. Then we take back off. And guys, this is so fun. But this is what I was talking to you about. This is where real learning happens. You know, uh, and I, like I said, I'm as guilty of this as anybody. You know, sitting there working on sitting down and heel and jump and climb and making, you know, forgetting, just forgetting to stress to people how important just living is, you know, because this is it. Look at this. Look at this tree here. This is, show them this, Eli. This right here, guys, I don't know what it's really called. We call it a thorn tree, you know, and it's got thorns all over it. And this tree looks and smells a certain way. And when we first come out here, sometimes puppies will run over here and run into this tree or jump up on it. They'll start to gnaw on it with their teeth, you know, with their mouth. And bam, what do they get? They get a, they get a sticker right in their mouth. You take them back to the kennel and you got to pick the stickers out of their mouth. Guess how many times that happens? It happens one time. Never happens again. Now ask yourself, saved up all your money to go on a trip, right? You went to Boy Scout Kip trip. You went to, you know, wherever, right? And the first day you get there, your puppy runs over to old thorn tree and gets a thorn in its mouth. You see what I'm saying? If it runs over to the old thorn tree and starts chewing on it, gets a thorn in its mouth, it's going to cut your whole trip short. So we need to knock that stuff out. We need to knock that out in our early preliminary training during the imprinting stage, if possible. If you're a little bit behind, that's okay. You're just a little bit behind. But, like, you know, you got to get started as soon as you can. And what you create is a dog that learns to navigate an environment. Just like you learn to navigate traffic on your way to work. You know, you learn to look and go, that's a dangerous driver. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, a traffic jam waiting to happen. Well, the puppies do the same thing when they're out here figuring out how to navigate this natural environment. They learn what's fun to chew on, what's not fun to chew on. They, they learn to enter into, enter into like brush piles with caution because bad things could be in the brush pile. Like, see these brush piles we've set out here? You know, you, we set these out here and dogs will come out here and they'll get to climbing around on here, you know. And after a while, they become sure-footed like a hillbilly goat, like Uncle Stoney. You know, but when they're young, they get out here, they get trapped. Their legs just fall through this brush pile and they're like, ah, ah, ah. They're coyote bait, basically. <laughs> Sometimes that's what we use them for is honestly. Good. All right. Well, listen. You know, that's basically, that's basically, you know, what I wanted to talk to you about. I don't have a whole lot extra to say here other than, uh, you know, get out and, uh, you know, have your little adventure right there. I'm telling you guys, these adventures are, you can have them. You can have them right there in your neighborhood. Oh, good. And a tired dog, an adventured out dog. Oh, don't need my microphone. It is a good dog. And more just happened in terms of stimulating mental development and uh, physical development in our little walk right here than in the whole two or three hours worth of training we were doing up there giving lessons this morning. Okay, that's what I really want you to understand. You don't have to be perfect at what I do. You don't have to be perfect at getting your dog to sit. You don't have to be perfect at getting your dog to lay down, right? Okay, all you have to do is be, you know, well-intentioned and be willing to put in consistent, persistent work. And it's a lot of fun, you know. It's good for you. You know, earlier I was talking about mental and physical development for your dog, but come on guys, how many of us can't use a, another few walks a week? How many of us as human beings can't go out and touch the earth? Think about how often you just don't ever touch the earth, you know. You don't, when's the last time you just picked up a handful of grass and smelled it you sm smell what dirt feels like getting your hands in the dirt is therapeutic smelling all the stuff's out here you don't smell that in the air conditioner you don't smell that in your office guys you're robbing yourself of experiences and so you know look it's better for you it's better for the dog get out there find you a, a puppy sized adventure and i promise you it'll be good for the puppy and it'll be good for you as a handler all right good luck